Registrar, could you please be kind enough and call the case? Good morning, Your Honours. This is the case number ITO 368A, the prosecutor versus Nasser Orit. Thank you. Before commencing this session, I should like, also on behalf of my colleagues on the bench, thank all of you having contributed on behalf of my colleague, uh, to contributed to these appeals hearings before and behind the scenes. My, I express gratitude in particular to translators and interpreters having assisted us in understanding each other. The purpose of today's session is to render the appeals judgment in the case of prosecutor versus Naza Orich. May I ask you, Mr. Orich, can you hear and follow the proceedings in a language you understand? Your Honor, I understand the proceedings in my own language. Thank you. May I have the appearances for the prosecution, please? Good morning, Your Honours. Paul Rogers uh, appearing for the prosecution together with my co-counsel, Laurel Baig, and our case manager this morning, Sebastian van Huydonk. Thank you. And for the defence, please? Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning to my colleagues in the OTP and everybody in and out of the courtroom. Vasvia Vidovic and John Jones representing Nasser Orich, assisted by Yasmina Ciosic and Adisa Mehic. Thank you. I will now uh, summarize the main issues on appeal and uh, the findings of the appeals chamber. This summary is not part of the written judgment, which is the only authoritative account of the appeals chamber rulings and reasons. Copies of the written judgment will be made available to the parties at the conclusion of this session. The events giving rise to this case took place in the municipality of Srebrenica in Bosnia and Herzegovina and its surrounding area between June 1992 and March 1993. In its indictment, the prosecution alleged that between 24 September 1992 and 20 March 1993, members of the military police of the municipality of Srebrenica, under the control of Nasa Orich, detained Serb individuals at the police station in Srebrenica and at a building behind the Srebrenica municipal, uh, municipal building here now after referred to as a building. A number of detainees were subjected to serious abuse and injury. Some were beaten to death. The prosecution also alleged that between 10 June 1992 and 8 January 1993, Bosnian Muslim armed units under the command and control of Nasa Oric burned and destroyed buildings, dwellings, and other properties in the course of military actions against the villages of Ratkovici, Jezicista, Fakovici, Bielovac, Krevica, Cilicovici, and surrounding and adjoining hamlets. The prosecution charged Nasa Orich with individual criminal responsibility under Article 7.3 of the statute of the tribunal for murder and cruel treatment and for wanton destruction of cities, towns or villages not justified by military necessity as violations of the laws or custom of war. The prosecution also charged Nasa Orich with individual criminal responsibility under Article 7.1 of the statute for instigating and aiding and abetting the crime of unlawful and wanton destruction not justified by military necessity. In its judgment of 30 June 2006, the trial chamber found that crimes of murder and cruel treatment were committed against Zerbs detained in Srebrenica 
during two periods. First, from 24 September to 16 October 1992, and second, from 15 December 1992 to 20 March 1993. It found that the military police was responsible for the occurrence of all these crimes. Furthermore, it found that the military police was subordinated to Nazar Orich through the successive chiefs of staff of the Srebrenica Armed Forces only after 27 November 1992. Nazar Orich was found guilty pursuant to Articles 3 and 7.3 of the statute for failing to discharge his duty as a superior to take necessary and reasonable measures to prevent the crimes of murder, count one, and cruel treatment, count two, committed against Serb detainees between 27 December 1992 and 20 March 1993. Because he was not found to have had effective control over the military police during the first period, Nazar Orich was not found responsible for the crimes perpetrated during this period. He was also acquitted of all other charges of the indictment. Nazar Orich was sentenced to two years imprisonment. Both. The prosecution and Nasa Orich lodged appeals against the trial judgment. I will first address Nasa Orich's appeal before turning to the prosecution's appeal. Nasa Orich's appeal consists of 13 grounds. His first and fifth grounds of appeal both raise the crucial issue of whether the trial chamber failed to make necessary findings to support a conviction on the Article 7.3 of the statute. Due to the possible impact on the remainder of his appeal, the Appeals Chamber has deemed it appropriate to consider these submissions first. Now, the Orich was convicted under Article 7.3 of the statute. For a superior to incur criminal responsibility under Article 7.3, in addition to establishing beyond reasonable doubt that he, uh, his subordinate is criminally responsible, the following elements must be established beyond reasonable doubt. Firstly, the existence of a superior subordinate relationship. Secondly, that the superior knew or had reasons to know that his subordinate was about to commit a crime or had done so. And thirdly, that the superior failed to take the necessary and reasonable measures to prevent his subordinate's criminal conduct or punish his subordinate. The trial chamber was obliged to make findings on each of these elements before being entitled to enter a conviction. Nasa Orich submits that the trial chamber failed to specify who his corresponding subordinates were. The appeal chairman notes that none of the principal perpetrators were found to be members of the military police or directly subordinated to Nasa Orich. The trial chamber found that, quote, the head, end of quote, of the military police after 27 November 1992, Artif Kritic was subordinated to him. Artif Kritic, who was not an accused before this tribunal, was found responsible for the crimes of murder and cruel treatment committed between December 1992 and March 1993. It follows that the trial chamber found that Orich's subordinates responsible for the crimes for which he was convicted was Artif Kritic. Now the Orich's contention that no subordinate was identified is therefore dismissed. In this respect, the prosecution submits that even if Artif Kritic had not been identified as military police commander, Nasa Orich could still have been held responsible for other unidentified members of the military police who aided and abetted the crimes. The appeal chamber stresses that, notwithstanding 
the degree of specificity with which the culpable subordinates must be identified, their existence as such must be established in any event. In the present case, the trial chamber did not identify any member of the military police other than Artif Kritic, who took part in the commission of the crimes for which another orange was found responsible. Not even by mere reference to their membership in the military police. The prosecution argument fails. Therefore, the trial chamber eventually identified only Artif Kritic as Nasa Orich's culpable subordinate. Nasa Orich also submits that it is unclear what theory of criminal liability the trial chamber applied to his alleged subordinates, and that this lack of clarity is in itself an error of law. Prosecution concedes that the trial chamber did not expressly designate a legal classification for the responsibility of the military police, but submits that, quote, it is reasonable to conclude, end of quote, that the trial chamber found that the military police, through their omissions, aided and abetted the murders and cruel treatment committed by the principal perpetrators. The appeal chamber notes that the trial chamber did not specify the basis for the criminal responsibility of Nasa Orich, only identified culpable subordinate from the military police, Artif Kritic. Having considered the trial chamber judgment as a whole, the appeal chamber is left with only a small number of general findings <coughs> without any indication of whether and how they relate to any form of criminal liability under the tribunal's statute as regards Artif Kritic. These scattered fragments do not allow the appeal chamber to conclude on what basis the trial chamber found Nasa Orich's only identified culpable subordinate criminal responsible. Yet, such finding would have been required to determine Nasa Orich's guilt. For these reasons, the appeal chamber finds that the trial chamber erred in failing to resolve the issue of whether another orange subordinate incurred criminal responsibility. <coughs> On another part of his first ground of appeal, another orange challenges the trial chamber's finding that he knew that the military police was responsible for the crimes committed in the detention facilities. The appeal chamber notes that, although such a finding was crucial to Nasa Orich's conviction, the trial chamber made no explicit finding on whether he knew or had reasons to know of Artif Kritic's alleged criminal responsibility for the mistreatment of Serb detainees. A holistic reading of the trial judgment reveals only vague and inconclusive statements in this respect. The difficulty in detecting the necessary findings by the trial chamber on this issue appears to arise from the approach taken in the trial judgment. Rather than examining the orange knowledge or reason to know of his own subordinates' alleged criminal conduct, the trial chamber concentrated its entire analysis on Nasa Orich's knowledge of the crimes themselves, which were not physically committed by Artif Kritic, his only identified culpable subordinate. This approach was ultimately reflected in the trial chamber's conclusion on Nasa Orich mens rea, which was squarely limited to the question of whether he knew or had reason to know of the actual crimes committed at the two detention facilities, to the exclusion of any finding on his knowledge of the alleged criminal conduct of his subordinate Artif Kredic. The appeal chamber considers that knowledge of the crimes and knowledge of a person's criminal conduct are in law and, in fact, distinct matters. Also, knowledge of a person's criminal conduct may 
depending on the circumstances, be inferred from knowledge of the crimes. The appeal chamber notes that such an inference was not made by the trial chamber. Instead, its inquiry was limited to now the origin knowledge of the crimes committed in the detention facilities, and so was its conclusion. The appeal chamber considers that the trial chamber's failure to make a finding on whether Nazi uh, Orich knew or had reasons to know that Artif Kridzic was about to or had engaged in criminal activity constitutes an error of law. In conclusion, the appeal chamber grants Nazi Orich's fifth, uh, first and fifth grounds of appeal insofar as he alleges therein that the trial chamber failed to make findings on the criminal responsibility of his only identified subordinate, Artif Kritic. Additionally, the trial chamber failed to determine whether Nasa Oric knew or had reason to know that Artif Kritic was about to or had committed crimes. In the absence of these findings, Nasa Oric's conviction under Article 7.3 of the statute cannot stand. These errors therefore invalidate the trial chamber's decision to convict Nasa Oric for his failure to prevent his subordinates' alleged criminal conduct in relation to the crimes committed against the Pitanis between December 1992 and March 1993. In response to Nasa Oric's appeal, the prosecution submitted, however, that the trial chamber could have convicted Nasa Oric for failing to, to prevent the guards at the detention facilities from committing the crimes or aiding and abetting the crimes of others. It argued that the trial chamber should not have stopped its inquiry after concluding that the guards were not members of the military police but should have gone further and found that they were nevertheless under Nasa Orich's effective control. The appeal chamber dismisses the prosecution's submission that Nasa Orich could have been convicted based on a superior subordinate relationship between him and unidentified guards, regardless of their membership in the military police. Such a relationship was not pleaded in the indictment. Therefore, the appeal chamber also dismisses the prosecution's submission that Nasa Orich's convictions could, not, could be sustained on an alternative basis. Accordingly, the appeal chamber considers that it need not, at this juncture, address Nasa Orich's remaining challenges to the trial chamber's factual and legal findings. The prosecution has raised a number of objections regarding the findings of the trial chamber, which, if accepted, could lead to a reversal of Nasa Orich's acquittal in certain respects. Therefore, before addressing any implication of its finding on Nasa Orich's appeal, the appeals chamber will first consider the prosecution's appeal. Prosecution's appeal was initially composed of five grounds of appeal. The third ground, alleging errors pertaining to wanton destruction in Dijesica, was subsequently withdrawn. The appeal chairman notes that the second and fourth grounds are rendered moot as a result of the appeal chamber's conclusion on Nasa Orich's appeal. The appeal chamber therefore limits its analysis to the prosecution's remaining grounds of appeal. The prosecution's first ground of appeal is composed of three subgrounds that concern the extent of Nasa Orit's criminal responsibility for the crimes of murder and cruel treatment. In the first subground, the prosecution submits that the trial chamber erred both in law and in fact in finding that Nasa Orich did not have effective control over the military police during the first period between 24 September and 16 October 1992. The appeal chamber finds 
that the prosecution fails to demonstrate that the trial chamber misapplied the burden of proof or erred in failing to consider that now the orage de jure command over the military police between 24 September and 16 October 1992 created a rebuttable presumption that he exercised effective control over that unit. In this respect, the appeals chamber acknowledges that its jurisprudence might have suggested otherwise using the terms presume or prima facie evidence of effective control. The import of such language has not always been clear. Also in some common law jurisdictions, prima facie evidence leads by definition to a burden shifting presumption the Appeals Chamber underscores that before the International Tribunal, the prosecution still bears the burden of proving beyond reasonable doubt that the accused had effective control over his subordinates. The possession of de jure authority, without more, provides only some evidence of such effective control. Before the International Tribunal, there is no such presumption to the detriment of an accused. For reasons explained in its judgment, the Appeals Chamber further finds that the prosecution fails to demonstrate that the trial chamber erred in fact when it found that Nasa Orich did not have effective control over the military police between 24 September and 16 October 1992. The prosecution further submits that the trial chamber erred in law in concluding that Nasa Orich could not be held responsible under Article 7.3 of the statute for failing to punish the crimes of murder and cruel treatment perpetrated between 24 September and 16 October 1992 because they were perpetrated before he assumed effective control over the military police. It argues that the trial chamber erred in applying the appeals chamber's governing law that an accused cannot be charged under Article 7.3 of the statute for crimes committed by a subordinate before the said accused assumed command over that subordinate. The prosecution argues that there are cogent reasons for the appeals chamber to depart from this position. The appeal chamber recalls that the ratio dissidendi of its decisions in is binding on trial chambers. Therefore, the trial chamber was correct in considering that it was bound to follow the precedent established by the appeal chamber in its decision of 2003 in the Hazanovich case. Turning to the prosecution's challenge to the ratio decidendi of the appeal chamber's decision in Hazanovic, the appeal chamber notes that the only member of the military police identified by the trial chamber before Orich assumed effective control over it was its commander, Mirzet Halilevich. Mirzet Halilevich was never found to be Orich's subordinate. In the absence of any other military policeman who would have committed a crime in the detention facility prior to 27 November 1992, Orich's duty to punish, presuming its existence, was without subject. The appeals chamber, Judge Liu and Judge Schomburg dissenting, declines to address the ratio decidendi of the Hazanovich appeal decision on jurisdiction, as it has no impact on the outcome of the present case. The prosecution's subground of appeal is dismissed. The trial chamber found that Nasa Orich did not have the required mens rea to be held criminally responsible for failing to punish his subordinates for the crimes committed at the detention facilities between December 1992 and March 1993. Under the last part of his first ground of appeal, prosecution 
alleges that had the trial chamber applied the had reason to know standard correctly, it would have concluded that Nazar Orich had reason to know that crimes of murder and cruel treatment had occurred between 27 December 1992 and 20 March 1993 uh, and convicted him for failing to punish. The appeal chamber notes that whereas the responsibility under Article 7.3 of the statute requires proof of the superior's knowledge or reason to know of his subordinate's criminal conduct, the prosecution contends that Nazar Oric had reason to know that the crimes of murder and cruel treatment themselves had occurred. The prosecution submits that in the present case, knowledge or reason to know of the crime and knowledge or reason to know of the subordinate's criminal conduct were, quote, one and the same, end of quote. The appeal chamber considers that the prosecution fails to substantiate this assertion and consequently need not consider any further the prosecution present subground of appeal. The prosecution's first ground of appeal is dismissed in its entirety. I will now turn to the prosecution's fifth ground of appeal in which the prosecution alleges two errors of law that have no impact on the verdict or the sentence against Nasa Oric, but are, in its view, matters of general importance to the case law of the tribunal. The prosecution first submits that the trial chamber erred in law in distinguishing between a general and a specific obligation under Article 7.3 of the statute concerning the duty to prevent crimes as well as in stating that the superior's failure to implement general preventative measures cannot give rise to criminal responsibility. The appeal chamber considers that it need not discuss the merits of this alleged error since the law on the issue was recently clearly stated in the Halilovich appeal judgment. Likewise, the appeal chamber declines to consider the second alleged error relating to preemptive destruction of civilian objects. The appeal chamber finds that the prosecution fails to demonstrate how the particular issue is, it raises is of general significance to the tribunal's jurisprudence and considers that the issue raised cannot be properly discussed in abstracto in the context of the present case. For the foregoing reasons, the prosecution's first ground of appeal is dismissed in its entirety. The appeals chamber declines to consider the prosecution's fifth ground of appeal and considers that the prosecution's remaining grounds of appeal are rendered moot as a result of the appeals chamber's discussion and conclusion on Nasa Orich's appeal. I will now turn to the implications of the foregoing conclusions uh, the appeals chamber reached on both appeals. The appeals chamber has found that the trial chamber failed to resolve whether two legal elements required to hold Nasa Orich criminal responsible under Article 7.3 of the statute were met. Yet, Nasa Orich's entire conviction rested on that mode of liability. The appeal chamber notes that neither party advo advocates a retrial. Moreover, the prosecution could not point to any evidence be it additional evidence or evidence on the trial record supporting its allegations that Nasa Orich's subordinates incurred criminal responsibility and that he knew or had reasons to know that they aided and abetted crimes against detained Serbs. The appeal chamber therefore considers that in the circumstances of this particular case, a remand would serve no purpose. In light of the foregoing, the appeal chamber finds that the appropriate course of action can only be a reversal 
of Nasser Orich convictions under Article 7.3 of the statute. Before turning to the disposition, the appeal chamber would like to underscore, like the trial chamber, there is no doubt that grave crimes were committed against Serb detained in Srebrenica at the Srebrenica police station and the building between September 1992 and March 1993. Also, the defense did not challenge that crimes were committed against Serb detainees. However, proof that crimes have occurred is not sufficient to sustain a conviction of an individual for these crimes. Criminal proceedings require evidence establishing beyond reasonable doubt that the accused is individually responsible for a crime before a conviction can be entered. Where an accused is charged with command responsibility pursuant to Article 7.3 of the statute, as it is in the present case, the prosecution must prove inter alia that his subordinates bore criminal responsibility and that he knew or had reasons to know about his or their criminal conduct. The trial chamber made no findings on either of these two fundamental elements. The prosecution, when asked on appeal if there was evidence to support the two elements, failed to point to evidence that could sustain Nasser Aurit's convictions for the crimes against the detainees. Consequently, the conclusion of the appeal chamber is a disposition that follows. Mr. Oric, would you please rise? For the foregoing reasons, the appeal chamber, pursuant to Article 25 of the statute and Rules 117 and 118 of the rules, noting the respective written submission of the parties and the arguments they presented at the hearings of 1 and 2 April 2008, sitting in open session, allows in part orage grounds of appeal 1 E1, 1, F2, and 5. Dismisses the prosecution's first ground of appeal in its entirety. Declines to consider all other grounds of appeal raised by the parties. Reverses orage convictions under Article 7.3 of the statute for failing to discharge his duty as a superior to take the necessary and reasonable measures to prevent the occurrence of murder, count one, and cruel treatment, count two, from 27 December 1992 to March 1993, and finds Orich not guilty on these counts. Judge Mohamed Shahbuddin appends a declaration Judge Luda Kun appends a partially dissenting opinion and declaration. Judge Wolfgang Schomburg appends a separate and partially dissenting opinion. Mr. Orich, you may be seated. I would now the registrar to please deliver copies of the judgment to the parties in this case. Madam Registrar, the case prosecutor versus Nasa Orich is finalized. Thank you.
Horizon. Fait que vous le